House of the Dragon Season 2, finally here, Episode 1, let's talk about it. Okay, so House of the Dragon Episode 1 of Season 2 has now officially come. It's been how long since we've been waiting for Season 2, man? Season 1 was absolutely incredible, arguably better than Season 1 of Game of Thrones. Season 2 couldn't come back. Any quick enough. Like, this was just a show I watched. I love it. So, episode one, man. Wow. So, it picks up right where we left off. From the first episode, uh, from the first season, where the death of Rhaenyra's son is now playing a huge role in what is about to happen. You know, we were there speculating who's going to make the first move, who's going to insinuate the war. Obviously, people that have read the books and that, you guys know. I haven't read the books in that. I know a bit about what's about to happen, but I don't know the ins and outs. Definitely didn't know in season one. It was only after season one I started to look into it a bit more, but it was about who was making the first move. And then obviously that happened last season. This whole entire episode, you feel the tension. You feel that it's at boiling point, that it's it's right on the cusp, man. All it takes is one more move from someone to just tip that scale to make it overflow and then it's all out war. That's you they did such a great job conveying that feeling. I was sitting there and you could feel like Damon's ready to go to war. He's he's flat out had enough. He's sitting there like as soon as uh thing she gets back, not Renera um oh, I forget her name. What's her name again? Ah, oh, I forget her name. But she comes back and he's like, "Yo, we're gone." We're riding out now. We're going to go get Vega. We're going to go kill that dragon right now. We're going to kill Aemon. We're going to do it. We're just going to do it right now. I can't do it alone. I need you. Once we take out their biggest dragon, it's game over. We've got it. And she's like, no, not doing it. The, did the queen give the order? And Damon's like, no, she's not here. And then it's like, well, she's mourning. Let her do that. We're not going without her say-so or anything like that. So Damon's already on edge. He wants revenge straight away. Rhaenyra's out there trying to process what has just happened like she's heard from the raven but obviously there's no proof or anything like that so she's out there looking for it and she finds the dragon wing and a bit of her son's stuff which has now made it more real like this has actually happened so there's this beautiful emotional scene there but the, the scene that is the most emotional in this whole entire episode is when the big brother comes back he comes back from Stark, which was a really, really, really cool scene. Him with Stark there, and they're talking. They go up to the ice wall, and they're sitting there looking over at the north and everything. And he says, you know, well, you're just out there, you know, defending the war from the wildlings and, you know, wild animals and stuff like that. What are you about? But then, obviously, Stark then says, do you think my ancestors built this war, this massive giant ice wall, to keep a couple of them things out? And I love when he's like, well, what is it keeping out? He's like, death. And obviously that's foreshadowing for what's coming in Game of Thrones with the White Walks and everything like that. But I thought that conversation was so incredibly thrilling and encapsulated everything about what is happening. And so when he comes back and he's there talking to his mum and he's like, I, this is what's happening. These people are going to pledge to you. This, you know, the Stark's going to do it. But he's, you can feel once he find he's already found out that his brother's dead. You can feel the emotion coming up. You can feel him trying to get the words out while trying to hold back the tears. Beautiful moment. Beautifully well acted. Fantastic. So good. Then you've got the greens and what's going on with the high towers. And uh, Christian Cole, man, that guy is just a sleazeball. He is a biggest sleazeball out there. Um, obviously, the, the one thing I was really interested in is Egon doesn't seem like he's a bad person at the moment. So, obviously, when they're going into the meeting and that, he's a bit of a clown and, you know, clowning around with the Lannisters. Well, I mean, who cares? It's the Lannister, right? Do whatever you want to them. They are just awful people. But he's sitting there, not taking it seriously or anything like that, thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this and that. But then you get to the moment where he's there and he's talking to the, the common folk who are coming up with petitions and... He's talking to them, and you can see that he wants to be sincere like his father before him, Viserys. He wants to be like him. He wants to figure out a way, how can I help these people, but also we benefit from it in a way where it's a mutual exchange, where no one is getting any downside. So he's like, 
I'm going to give you back your goats, your sheep. Because obviously, you know, winter's coming. You're not going to survive. I'm going to give you back your sheep. I'm going to replenish that for you. So that way you can make it through. This is where Otto comes in. And Otto is pulling all the strings. Everything is Otto to Hightower. He is the... He is the puppeteer right now, and he's telling him, no, we can't do that. We need them. You need to do this and that. And then so he's like, after thought, I have to, you know, stop that and that. Next person comes up, I was like, oh, man, iron's gone up. I need I need more money in that to be able to do this, etc." And this is where Aegon's like, okay, you're going to get paid for it because I need you guys. I need you guys to be able to build my weapons for my army in order to survive and win this battle. And uh, I love it. Otto is about to come up to talk to him about it. And he's like, just straight up tells the guy, you are the people that are going to win us this war. I need you guys to win this war. So you can already see that the king wants pushback on his mum and his grandfather. He wants to push back on them and do things his way. He wants to try and do it peacefully and stuff like that and be an actual decent king by the looks of it. Then you obviously have the stuff with Allison that's going on and oh my god that's crazy and then obviously Eamon as well he him and Christian Cole are like trying to move things trying to get things organized what are they going to do what are they going to do this but then but then just when you think okay the tension's there it's already all ready to go someone just needs to get some scissors and cut it Damon hires some people to go into King's Landing to get Eamon he wants Eamon he wants him he wants him dead at all cost. So he hires the rat catchers to go in there and do it. He, he describes to him, like this guy, you know, silver hair, one eye, need to get him. And apparently he's good in the fight, so you should, you know, tread with care and stuff like that, but you need to get his head. Bruh, poor Helena, man. Poor Helena. Bruh, she just sentenced her son to death because she had to. And, like, they kill... The kid, man. They kill the kid and take the head of the kid. And Helena runs to Allison's room, who's obviously shagging Christian Cole. We know that's happening. Oh, whoa. Who would have thought that? So she goes there, and this is where now she's like, they killed they killed the boy. Boom. That's the cliffhanger. Bruh, it's, it's on. It's game on. That's it. That's it. That is the moment there where it's happening. Everything is about to now. The dominoes have fallen. One went. And it was wobbling. It was just waiting for another one to hit. And now it's hit another domino. It's all free for all now. It is war on. Bruh, this episode's so good. Visually stunning. I mean, that's what to... What do you expect when it comes to this type of movie? Visually stunning. Performances, incredible. Writing, incredible. You still got the creepy guy that has the foot fetish. He's getting his grubby hands into it with the king, with everyone. He's trying to manipulate people to doing his fitting. It's it's on. And episode one, this was the perfect episode to get us on the right foot. This just had everything showcased you where we are at this point in time, what is happening, the tensions building, it's on the knife edge, and now, boom, the catalyst has happened. We're at war now. So let me know what you guys thought of this episode. Did you guys enjoy episode one? Smash it down in the comment section below. Smash that like button. Click subscribe. And I'll see you guys next video. Until then, stay safe and peace out.